Okay, I admit, that's quite the clickbait title, but it's true. I plan on selling nearly every bike I own. But before I fully explain why, I need to take you back a few years to the start of my channel. Probably look pretty ridiculous, but fingers crossed this will capture some, uh, some good angles and actually I can use my hands this time. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? So that awkward guy who doesn't know how to smile is me back in 2016. But more importantly is the location. This was the flat I shared with Danny McCaskill and Duncan Shaw. It was the top floor of a block of flats near the centre of Glasgow, which meant no garden, no shed, no garage, and no suitable place to build or maintain bikes. This meant we had to use our living room, which isn't ideal for a few reasons. Firstly, I had to wait until no one was in to film, and it also meant the kitchen table was also used as a workbench, or if it was dry outside, a picnic table was a good substitute. The toolbox was a set of bedroom drawers, the kitchen sink shared food with various bike fluids, and the sofa had more spokes and nipples lost down the back than I care to think. It really wasn't a great place to work on bikes. Things have changed though, and I got an upgrade my very own garage. And this is how it looked when I got it. And this is how it looks now. So as you can tell, after a little bit of time has passed, the garage is looking fairly different, but purely because I've just completely filled it up. So there's a few things I need to do, which I'm gonna run through in this video on how I'm gonna change up this garage and make it better for me. I think the first thing I need to address is just how many bikes I have. There's more here than you actually think. And yeah, I think I have a bit of a hoarding issue. Having a space like this has been amazing for building bikes and I think I just went a bit nuts. So that's where the title of this video comes in because yeah, I think I want to sell pretty much every single one of these bikes bar a couple. So I will be putting these up for sale at some point. It's going to take me a long time to get through all of them, make sure they're all working well, document every part on them take photos, do all the things that takes time when selling bikes. But I will be selling all of these, including one of my original builds in the first lockdown, the Giant Team Trials. I've got my popular On One Fat Bike, did a few videos on that, really enjoyed it. Got the Pink Pogo, which pretty much started this whole bike building process. That was a really fun one, really cool bike, popular video series, but it's gotta go. Got my Norco Ryan Leach. Now this one I am so on the edge. Do I sell that or not? Because that is a real unicorn bike. You don't see many of those around, especially in this condition. That is a really cool bike, but I don't ride it. And I suspect someone else is probably gonna enjoy that more than I do. Hidden behind here, we have my on one single speed bike. And to be honest with you, I built that bike and I have literally never ridden it. Part of these build processes I build just because I really enjoy the process of it. I really enjoy searching online, trying to find all the parts, sending out the cute thief to find some obscure, weird, rare part. I sometimes don't even know what it's gonna come back with. And then actually building the bike I find really fun. So things like the on one single speed bike, I wasn't as interested to ride it as I was to build it. So I've literally never ridden it. So that's gonna go. Here's a project bike which has never been on the channel. It's one that I started, I've got most of the parts for it, but yeah, I just haven't finished it yet and I certainly haven't filmed and built it for a channel and to be honest with you, I don't see myself doing that, so that's gonna go. The Cannondale gravel bike. Now, again, I haven't ridden that bike either. I built it and then the weather kind of turned a bit crap and I didn't really want to go out and get paint chips from all the gravel coming smack in the frame. That was a pure joy to source and build. And I think I'd probably enjoyed that process more than I would riding it and crying inside a little bit for getting it dirty. So I'm gonna sell that as well. And speaking of retro Cannondales, there's actually another one here which I got over a year ago and I've literally not done anything with it. It's just gone and sat in the loft. I got this because it came up at a price which I thought was pretty reasonable. 
and it's a bike that I've always, always wanted. It's a Cannondale Raven, one of the first carbon fiber frames, and it's actually a dream bike of mine. When I went to college, I had a briefcase which I cut out all my dream bikes out of the magazines and stuck them on, and this was one of the top ones that had pride place right in the middle of my briefcase, and I now own one. But now that I've got it, I don't know what to do with it. It's just been stuck in my loft, gathering dust, and it seems a little bit of a shame for it to do that, so I'm gonna let that go as well. I've gone through the process of finding one, owning one, and I've scratched that itch, and now I think someone else could enjoy it more than I enjoy it. Another bike that I bought because it just came up locally at a decent price is a Monty 221 X Lite. Now, famously on this channel, I've said that I don't like 20 inch trials bikes, but I actually did spend one year back in maybe the year 2000 on one of these bikes and it was actually a pretty cool bike and to see one of these these days that isn't cracked is pretty rare. There are also two Ozoni bikes at the back there and I'm not going to sell those just yet. Those are two competition trials bikes with geometry that I actually quite like compared with most modern bikes which are so extreme these ones are a little tailored back a little bit more old school and they suit me way better than the modern bikes do. The other bike I'm not selling is my Inspired Hex because that is just the bike that I ride. I know a lot of people when I've spoken to them about selling my bikes that's just asking me are you selling a Hex? Do you have any Hexes? No I don't have any Hexes for sale just yet. Another bike hanging up in the back there is my Santa Cruz 5010. I really like that bike despite not having ridden it for a little while but if things go to plan that will be for sale too because I'm currently talking to a bike brand and things are looking good that I will have some new mountain bikes pretty soon. So fingers crossed that that all goes well. So yeah, I'm trying to sell my bikes, but I'm not quitting riding anytime soon, far from it. I'm as stoked as I've ever been. And I think next year is gonna be awesome. The reason why I'm selling the bikes is because I want the space and also the money to take part in a project which I'm really keen to do. And that is just basically turn this space into the ultimate bike cave. Right, with the bikes removed, we've got a bit more space in here and I wanna show you why the space at the minute is a compromise, it's not perfect. So let's get started with the lighting in here, which is also a safety feature. Okay, well lighting wise, most of my light actually is natural and comes from this window. But that is good and bad. Good because when I'm working in here and it's during the day, I actually have really nice light coming through and illuminates where I'm working perfectly. But if it's dark, it's crap. And if I'm filming, as you can probably tell, I'm in silhouette. So anytime I've been in here and I'm trying to work and film on this worktop here, it's actually really hard to get the footage bright enough or I have to put the camera in some really awkward position and it's just not great. When it's winter, this is extremely limiting. So having a great big window here, it's not all it's cracked up to be. And that isn't a pun by the way, but I do worry about cracking this if anything falls into it. And also it's a little bit of security risk because it's a great big window, someone could easily smash that and you could fit quite a lot through that. So one of the first things I want to do is actually board this up. It seems a little bit of a shame to get rid of such a nice bright window, but it takes up a lot of wall space. It's a security issue and actually makes filming against it really hard. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna board this up get back loads of space, make it more secure. And that leads on to the next thing, actual lighting. So other than the window, there aren't actually any other lights in here, not ones that really work anyway. So I've actually gone and fitted these LED ones, which I used in the flat just as a bit more lighting because the lighting there was very yellow from the normal household light bulbs. And these have been okay. They're a little bit limiting in how much they illuminate. I've got them kind of coming down where I want them, but I'm limited where I can put them because of how long the cables are and they're not actually that secure. This one has fallen off more times than I care to think and it's looking a bit bent. I think I dropped caustic soda all over this thing. So they're better than what was in here, but I need to change that. I need to have better lighting, especially if I'm gonna be blanking off the window. One thing I plan to get in here is some real nice lighting and just make this place so much nicer to film. Now I mentioned lighting and safety in the same bracket and that's because anything that's electronic in here is coming through this plug socket, including the lights. And often when I plug them in, they trip. Let's see if that happens now. 
No, well, they didn't. <laughs> Classic, when I want it to happen, it doesn't happen. At any time I don't want it to happen, it always does have to run in the house, switch the switch back on and then come back in here. But that's not ideal and I do worry about the safety aspect of just running too many things through here. So not only do I want to get better lighting, I want to make it safer as well. So that is number one priority. The other thing that's high on my list of priorities is changing my garage door. This is your classic kind of up and over design and it's quite a secure door, I quite like it, but there's definitely some things I really don't like about it. Well, firstly, when it's open like this, everyone can see in and I don't like that from a security point of view. There's a walkway that just goes past the house, a lot of people pass and if I'm working in here and have this open, anyone can see what I've got and that's not ideal. The other thing I don't like about this is just that I have to open the entire thing even if I just want to go in and out. So I've ordered a side hinged version which will be offset so it'd be like a normal door and then a bigger one. That way if I just want to go in and out I don't have to open up the entire thing. The other things I don't like is just how loud this thing as well. If I want to shut it it's, it's a loud door so by having a side hinged one I do limit some outside space but it's gonna be a lot quieter. And speaking of space, one of the main reasons why I want to get a side hinge door is so that I'm not taking up any space inside. Currently, when I open the garage door, it takes up a lot of space inside here and limits how wide anything can be in this area here. So if I wanted to store bikes, impossible. I cannot put any bikes here. If I want to have some decent shelving, no, I'm limited. I can't have anything wider than this, which is why that's there. So by having a side hinge door, I gain so much space inside here. And I actually imagine this would be a really good place to have my bikes. And not only will I get more depth, I'll actually get better access to the ceiling. So I can have lighting there. I can have storage there. I can have whatever I want that currently I can't. So yeah, looking forward to that. When I first got this garage, I dedicated this back wall to be my bike storage and it's kind of worked okay until I just got too many bikes. Now there were already some holes drilled in the wall which I attached some hooks to and it's, it, they work okay. I think most riders have probably stored the bike on a hook somewhere. It works, it obviously works. The bikes are up, they haven't fallen down, but getting them in and out of these things, it's tricky, especially when there's lots of bikes in the way. I can't tilt the bikes very well. It's just not an ideal solution. This is not where the bikes are gonna go in my new revision of the garage. I want to put the bikes over near the door and I've seen this really cool bike storage system which allows me to move the bikes out of the way and store way more bikes in a similar size space. So that's the plan, get a real neat storage solution a bit further away and this place will actually be my new bench location. So rather than have the bench next to the window there, which will become just a wall, I'm gonna dedicate the back end here to my workshop bench and general bike maintenance area. Now I do have a boiler there, which is kind of in the way a little bit, but imagine the bench will probably be on this side, a vice here, and I wanna have maybe an L shape, so it comes against the back wall a little bit. I do have a freezer which needs to go somewhere, so that'll probably go underneath there. I'll box up the boiler and all the pipes and stuff, but with the boiler being there, I kind of fancy having a little sink. Not only will it be so handy for cleaning bike parts, servicing suspension, obviously deal with the oils responsibly, but I can make cups of teas and wash my hands and generally be a lot cleaner in here than I currently am. So I think that'd be perfect and I actually make use of having a boiler. I will have space over here and I kind of fancy something I've wanted for a long, long time. And the more I've been tinkering in here, the more it's made sense to get one. And that's a lathe. And if I have space, I'd love to get a pillar drill next to that as well. And I can imagine those going against the back wall there. And I think that would be awesome. Have some storage underneath it, some storage above it. Just general, I just want lots of storage because I've, I've still got lots of stuff. But I think just having this back area here as kind of my workshop area would be Perfect. That leaves this open to whatever I want. This could be, I don't know, wheel storage. This could be just all bike storage down this end, depending on how many bikes I get from this potential new sponsor. And it, yeah, it'll just be a way better use of space than what's currently in here. 
Now I was tempted to do it myself, a little bit of a DIY project, but thinking about it, firstly my DIY skills are really quite bad. It would take me so long and the end result, I'd probably be a little bit disappointed by my own work. So I'm thinking of getting someone else in to do the work for me. I've spoken with a friend who owns a company who are keen and I'm waiting on a quote. Hopefully it's in the realms of something I can actually afford, but we'll see. Now I've been in here long enough with this setup to kind of know what I want. I think I've got most things in my head sorted, written down, but I'm open to your ideas as well. What do you think I should have in here? What does a workshop absolutely need? I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you know any brands that might be interested to help either do some work or kit this place out, um, I'm all ears. I wasn't really sure how to make this video, but at least it might show you kind of the situation, a bit more detail about my current garage workshop layout and how I want to improve it. I know a lot of you guys are interested in workshop garage builds, so I hope this was interesting for you. Is that everything? I think that's everything then. I hope you have an amazing week and I'll catch you next time. So take care everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.